So now in this video, we're going to look at using the op amp as a comparator. So this is going to be a non-inverting comparator. And I think this is the most important circuit to learn first because it shows the basic properties of the op amp. So I'm going to use the 741 op amp. And so a split supply is definitely preferred. It does not go from rail voltage to rail voltage at the output. We'll look at that later. So I have here a 2426. Usually you'll see TLE 2426 if you try to buy it somewhere. But uh, in any case, it takes the rail voltage and actually splits it for us. We will get a halfway point, which will be our zero volt reference point. So I have the multimeter here and I just turned on the power supply and at the rail we have 18 volts. So I picked 18 volts because old videos I used to use 9 volt batteries and as you will see here if I put the black probe to that jumper there that is the virtual ground right now at uh, the end pin there we have 9 volts at the common pin over there we have negative 9 volts so that's in relationship to there, and it's going to hold that uh, halfway point really well, even with different uh, loads. So moving along, when it comes to using op amps or comparators, there's one main thing to understand. It has two inputs. So one is plus, one is minus. They are named non-inverting input for the plus and inverting input for the minus. And so we have the output here. So you power the op amp or comparator and you don't always see these power pins there. But uh, if you don't see the power pins there, you put the full supply voltage across them. And uh, anyways, you, you always have to power the integrated circuit. But in uh, any case, I'm going to leave them on there to uh, make it clear. You got to power it. And so it takes these two inputs and it compares them so it pretty much always does that no matter what circuit you have but this one takes that to the most extreme so if the non-inverting input voltage is higher than the inverting input voltage then the output will get as close to the positive rail in this case as it can if the uh, non-inverting input voltage is lower than the uh, reference voltage that we set here at the inverting input then the output will be as close to the negative rail as possible and so with no feedback you get all the amplification that the op amp can provide which is limited to the uh, rails and that amplification is either to the positive rail or the negative rail as close as it can get and so in any case we're going to use resistors for uh, our circuit a voltage divider at the uh, a fixed voltage divider at the inverting input that will be our reference voltage and we will use a trim pot to give us a variable voltage a signal to the non inverting input and LEDs will give us an idea of what we have going on so now wiring it up first off as I said before we have to power the uh, op amp that's always the case for the 741 and a number of other op amps this is the pin layout for it so you always gotta check the data sheet and uh, you should review data sheets of every uh, integrated circuit especially component that you use but in any case you can see here we have the negative voltage to pin 4 right there and uh, so they're one two three four pin four negative voltage and then pin seven up here is the positive voltage so we got that out of the way I'm using 18 volts at the rail but when uh, the output goes to uh, ground that will see that uh, we have nine volts on each side as uh, we demonstrated earlier so in relationship to ground we have nine volts there you can see zero volts is our reference point right there now for our fixed uh, value resistors here that we're gonna put to the inverting input 
So that will give us, again, zero volts. We got positive nine there, negative nine there, halfway, because these are equal value resistors, will give us zero volts, halfway between those two points. And that is really straightforward. So there you can see that uh, pin number two is the inverting input. I even added the little schematic there. Also, uh, these symbols on the uh, component there, they'll, they'll be fixed in one position. But on the schematic diagram, the non-inverting may be up there and the inverting down there. They are not always the non-inverting at the bottom and the inverting on top. So be aware of that. You have to pay attention to which pin is which on the schematic because they'll just draw it out however it works best. So we're going to take a 100,000 ohm resistor. So how much current going through here? is not important other than how hot the resistors will get. You can see it goes to the positive rail. The input lets practically no current through it. It does not depend on any current. It just looks at the voltage. So you can use high value resistors and uh, and, and you'll be just fine. So these are 100,000 ohm resistors. You can do 10,000 ohm resistors but uh, they'll just get warmer for really no reason. And uh, so we have that set. Now, for the uh, non-inverting input, which you can see is pin number three, right there. We're going to put a trim pot. So, I do it this way because it's really easy to adjust the voltage. And uh, so this is a 10 kilo ohm trim pot, just because all I have for trim pots like this are uh, 10 kilo ohms. You could use 100,000 ohms, doesn't really matter. Again, the input really lets no current through it, uh, a tiny bit trickles through but uh, it's insignificant for uh, most circuits and uh, so the resistive element there is uh, the top pin and then the bottom pin it runs along there the wiper slides across there and gives us a variable uh, voltage based on the voltage across there middle pin there is the output that little arrow there and I'm gonna put it to the non-inverting pin right there and that's literally it for wiring this up other than we won't be able to see what's going on unless we take voltage measurements so instead of doing that I'm going to uh, use a couple LEDs right there so you can see we have a 1000 ohm resistor that's because we're dealing with 9 volts either positive or negative potentially this uh, 741 op amp doesn't go to the rails so we'll actually be dealing with probably about 8 volts positive to uh, negative 6.5 volts. So we'll look at that later, but just be aware of that not all op amps go rail to uh, rail or to either rail and uh, so that's one thing to look at. So I'm going to go right below the power pin which was pin 7 to the uh, output right there and what we're going to do with the LEDs you can use any color LED you want that doesn't really matter. You notice that uh, they are backwards from each other. So depending on the output, one will be forward bias and one will be reverse bias, one or the other. And uh, so I want this red LED to light up when the output is more positive than zero volts for a couple reasons. First off, we'll have more voltage that way, as you can see there the red LED is not as bright as the green LED with the same amount of current going through it. In fact, it's not as bright even with less current going through it. So that's a topic for a video I did before, but uh, the green LED does not, or green LED blocks more voltage. So it blocks more voltage with the same resistor. It has less current and it's still brighter than the red LED. So we're gonna put the long lead, the anode to the resistor there Shortly the cathode, we're going to go to our virtual ground right there. All we care about right here, this is zero volts now. That's positive nine, that's negative nine. And uh, so we got the red LED wired with the anode towards the output. The green LED, in this case, we're going to put the cathode towards the output and then the anode towards the uh, virtual ground. So we'll go like this anode up there, cathode down there. And now we are done wiring this. So let's 
take a look at the full circuit really quick right there that is what we have right there now we will grab the power supply the output is off right now I turned it off and I hit this power button there now the output is on right there and you can see that the red LED is on the trim pot here is closer to the positive rail so I can go even more closer to the positive rail you're not going to see anything change once we get somewhere right about halfway point you see it flips to green now we're pointing more towards the negative rail right there so it is just comparing the voltage we don't have to use the halfway point we could use different value resistors we could take a zener diode even an LED or something something to set a voltage to the inverting input and whatever that voltage is when we cross that line with the trim pot it will change and uh, the trim pot at the non-inverting input and so we can do all kinds of stuff with this but uh, the LEDs I think are the, uh, the easiest way to quickly see what is going on here so now as I said before we will actually look at this voltage to, uh, to prove this so this is a good idea to do with any op amp you use especially if you find reading data sheets confusing but uh, right now we have a low output we know that because we have the green LED right there so we're gonna go to our virtual ground right there we're interested in the voltage in relationship to our virtual ground our halfway point and uh, there you can see it's a little more than 6.5 volts and I just rounded it down to negative it's in the negative by the way negative 6.5 volts right there so that is at the low output now we got a high output since it's a comparator I'm just going to use digital logic terminology of high and low we could use ones and zeros or whatnot this is either fully on or it is fully off and when it's fully off it's in the negative actually but in any case there you can see we have 8 volts right there in relationship to our virtual ground whereas at the rails we have a 9 volt either positive or negative difference than the virtual ground right there so any case this usually isn't the first circuit that's taught but I think it is the best circuit to teach first because all circuits with op amps and comparators they rely comparators especially on the uh, voltage difference between the non-inverting and the inverting input the uh, difference with other circuits are they give feedback some of that output goes to one or the other or both of the inputs in order to tame down right now it's trying to amplify probably like a hundred thousand times whatever the voltage is coming in but it's limited to what the rails can go to and it can't even get all the way to the rails so it really rapidly even though there's a very small difference between the non-inverting and inverting it very rapidly jumps over and uh, but it's taking whatever that difference is and multiplying it I don't know the exact number but I'm guessing by about a hundred thousand times so if you have like a 0 0.01 volt difference between the two inputs you you might have like a thousand times that going uh, through here so maybe 10 volts or something if, if you get down to the minimum but in any case with feedback you can uh, taper down the amount of gain because you'll have some of the output going to one or the other and that's uh, what you'll learn in other circuits but once you have this down it will make it a lot easier to understand what that feedback is doing and why it is doing that so hope that all made sense thanks for watching I will see you in the next video